Hi, so this is a video about uh, Batman Continues, right? So Batman Continues was going to be the third Tim Burton Batman movie, okay? Okay, so who was going to direct it? Obviously Tim Burton. The producers would be Denise Sanovi and Tim Burton, okay? like Batman Returns. Now the writers, okay, so the writers, there would be, uh, the main writer would be Wesley Strick and Daniel Waters would be involved in some capacity. Maybe it would be um, Wesley Strick and Daniel Waters, or Wesley Strick and Daniel Waters, but Daniel Waters would be uncredited like Wesley Strick was for Returns. But Waters would be downplayed because Strick would be put into the spotlight, you know? Because it didn't, they didn't want it to be as weird or wacky as Returns, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah. Um, then they would have, um, you know, Danny, Danny Elfman is a composer, but the production designer would be Rick Heinrichs, replacing Bo Welch. Um... Billy D. Williams would come back as Harvey Dent, be reestablished as a new character almost, because you know he you haven't seen him since the '89 movie, and this movie would be disconnected and, and original. So he'd be he'd probably be the mayor of Gotham City, and he'd be attacked by the Riddler, who's the main villain of the film. So Batman has become really popular. He's become an idol of the city. You know, there's merchandise, there's Batman merchandise, the people, Batman copycats wearing Batman t-shirts and, and cap, ba um, you know, baseball caps, running around with baseball bats, hitting, you know, vigilantism, you know, like, you know, r you know, causing havoc. And there's this really nerdy mechanic, black, uh, you know, Marlon Wayans, with an R on his overalls. And he, um, you know, he's a really nerdy mechanic. He loves Batman. He's Batman's number one fan. And he helps Batman out with the Batmobile. Um, and he helps him out with some, like, rogue vigilantes, cop copycats, you know? Um, but the Riddler, he's this guy, he's intelligent, he's genius, Edward Nigma, of course. But nobody notices how smart he is, you know? And everybody loves Batman, and he hates Batman, because, you know, Batman has all this fame, and he doesn't have anything. So he wages war on Batman with his riddles, you know, as the Riddler. You know, and he's this shadowy, you know, spidery villain, you know, he has all these plans and plots and mind games. It's this big, you know, cat and mouse game, it's amazing. And... In the crossfire, um, an ally, well, probably an ally Batman, I don't know what, 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 you know, maybe the relationship that is lacking with Commissioner Gordon and Batman will be um, shown with um, Harvey Dent um, in this new movie. He will be the mayor of the city, you know, the latest mayor, and he will be attacked by, two, um, by Riddler and become Two-Face. And so he would be a rogue element, sort of like Catwoman in, um, in Batman Returns, um, sort of, because uh, he'd be, be this tragic fan of the opera kind of guy, you know, and the, um, the romantic interest of the film. Now, I'm thinking she would be, um, she would be Julie Madison. And my thinking, my thinking is the casting for this, Kirstie Alley. You know, that, you know, that's, it's, it's a co completely conjecture, you know, like, but, um, that's what I think. It'd be perfect for that. Um, but, you know, who knows? Um, but, uh, yeah, she'd be the nurse at Gotham Hospital or whatever, treating Two-Face. And he'd fall in love with her and stuff and like that. And sort of fan the opera thing. But she would be Bruce Wayne's love interest and stuff like that. She'd be... You know, she would be fascinated with Batman just like everybody else, but, you know, and fall in love with Bruce Wayne or whatever. And Batman would be like, you know, well, you know why, am I, why, am I, why am I Batman in the first place? Like, you know, I, I want to be a creature of the shadows. I don't want to be this big you know, public symbol, this, you know, mascot for Gotham City. It's crazy. Like, so it's all about hero worship and, you know, and, and taking a sort of a jab, at, you know, the materialism of, um, you know, of you know, the, the Batmania from the first movie. But also, you know, the whole Happy Meal ordeal from Batman Returns. Because sort of taking a jab at the corporate, you know, exploitation of Batman. You know, so sort of commentary like that. That would be Daniel Waters' input. Um, yeah, but the Riddler would be Brad Dourif. So Brad Dourif was Tim Burton's pick for the Joker, but um, guess what? Joker. Um, he didn't get to be Joker, but Riddler, Brad Dourif, easy pick. And Brad Dourif as a Riddler would have been amazing. So Two Face, right? He would have been really done pretty proper. You know, just like Joker or Catwoman. You know, with a proper origin story, like Penguin and stuff. You know, and he'd have his own theme song, just like, you know, Danny Elfman did for the other guys, the other villains. And he'd be really, like, you know, highlighted, you know, he'd be this tragic figure. You know, he used his coin to, you know, to bring, you know, bring twisted justice to Gotham City, you know, sort of like a twisted version of Batman, you know. And he'd be after Riddler for revenge and stuff like that and get involved in Batman's thing. And the Riddler, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm just fibbling here, but this, this was in Batman, uh, the original Batman, Return, one of the Batman Returns scripts. Riddler would um, find out Bruce Wayne is Batman, and he would exploit the Wayne Manor. He would, you know, break into Wayne Manor and attack the Batcave. Just like in Batman Forever, Forever, but done properly. Done properly, actually, like, seriously. And, like, with real, like, gravitas, you know? Not, like, like silly, like with Jim Carrey. And so, um, yeah, that would happen. And then so he would need help from the, uh, the mechanic, the kid, who's Robin. 
and his name is Robin. And Robin helps him out and he gets the bat cycle. And he goes to the Riddler's Lair and there's a big and Two Face follows him and there's a big showdown. And in the end, Two Face defies the coin because the coin controls his whole life, you know. And he defies the coin and he sacrifices himself, act of redemption. You know, do you know how Catwoman, you know, decided to kill Max Streck and you know, um, you know, uh, in, in, instead of having a life with Batman? So Two Face chooses to side with Batman in, instead. So he makes the right choice. He sides with Batman and he redeems himself and he sacrifices himself and he takes down the Riddler and the Riddler's killed. And so. You know, some of this I'm um, just sort of filling in the gaps a little bit, but this is the basic overall idea. And so I'm thinking also, I'm not, I'm not, I'm thinking also the story, the the the, the setting, the time timing of the film would be at Halloween. So Gotham would be most spooky, most you know sort of haunting. You know, it'd be really quite good. So it'd be a really excellent third movie. You know, it's sort of like it's sort of a little bit less than Batman Returns, but it's sort of back to sort of like the sort of a middle ground between Batman and, and Batman Returns, but it sounds like, you know, Riddler and Two-Face and Robin, it sounds like it would have been a real banger. And Batman Forever is nothing compared to Batman Continues. It doesn't even exist. But this film, you know, um, it would have released in 1905 as well. Um, it's just, it would have been quite great, you know. It would have been fantastic, yeah. I, 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 I you know, I'm really hung up about it.